Do you want to fly your drone at night? Well, the rules for flying a drone at night were changed several years ago, but still a lot of people are missing a lot of the night related questions on my part 107 practice test. And I think one of the main reasons for that is just using old outdated information to study like this YouTube video that might be completely irrelevant and inaccurate by 2030 and who knows. So what I want to do in this video is take you through the current rules for flying a drone at night, show you my pick for an anti-collision beacon that I think you're going to love. And then I want to go over some of the actual part 107 night related questions, both from my 315 question test bank and also questions that were written by the FAA that you might see on your actual test. And I don't want to start by going over the old night regulations. I don't want to confuse you. So here is what you need to do now to fly your drone at night. As of now, in 2025, you can fly your drone 24 seven, only having to meet one additional requirement to fly at night. You still need to meet the remote ID requirements and airspace restrictions, but to fly at night, the only thing that you need between sunset and sunrise is a anti-collision beacon or a strobe. That strobe needs to meet two requirements. It has to be visible for three statute miles and it has to blink at a rate that is sufficient to avoid a collision. As long as it meets those two requirements, those are the only extra steps you have to take to fly at night. And that's out of 14 CFR 107.29. Please don't come at me saying that AI told you something else as has happened before, because AI is also using the same outdated and correct information to find its answers. The official source is the FAA regulations. Everyone watching this video right now will have taken their test or renewed their part 107 after 2021. So you've all met that requirement right here. I want to talk about the actual lights, the anti-collision beacons real quick. The navigation lights on your drone, the ones on the arms underneath the motors in almost every instance do not meet these requirements, mostly because they're not visible for three miles. Again, don't go asking AI about this because I did. And it told me that all built in lights on DJI Mavics meet the requirements to fly at night. And its source was an aftermarket high intensity strobe that attaches to the Mavic. And that's what it was using to say that all Mavics meet this requirement. So again, don't go asking AI. You're not going to see those lights for three miles. You do need an aftermarket anti-collision beacon that meets those requirements. But don't worry, there are a lot of options out there and they're all super affordable. I used to use these loom cube lights, but I hated them because you turn them on and off by pressing the dome. They always turned on by themselves, no matter how I stored them in transit, whatever kind of carrier I was using, something would bump into them, they'd turn on and then the batteries would completely drain while they were sitting in my bag. What I use now and I love, and these are probably the best ones out there, are the Firehouse Arc LEDs. I will link to these in the description. They come in white, red, and green. They have a bunch of different blink patterns. They also include heavy duty Velcro and tape, and they charge via USB-C, so it's very accessible. So you'll get one of these strobes and then attach it to the bottom of your drone, right? To help you see it better. Well, that's not the intent of this rule. The intent of the anti-collision light that's visible for three miles is for other aircraft, for other aircraft to be able to see your drone and prevent a collision. So they need to be mounted on the top of your drone because that's where all other manned aircraft are going to see them. Besides, you don't really want them on the bottom because as they blink, if you're close to any kind of reflective surface at night, that blinking is going to show up in your photo or video. What you can do to help you see at night is also get a red and a green strobe to put on the sides. The red one's gonna go on the left, the green one is gonna go on the right. The red's a little more difficult to see at night. And how do you remember which color goes on which side? Well, there's a couple of different mnemonic devices for that. The first is red's not right, it's left. Red's not right, that's how I taught it for years. Or if you know that in sailing speak, port is the left side, 
port wine is red, so red goes on the port or the left side. And those will help you identify which side of the drone that you're looking at. I actually use these during the day to immediately draw my eyes to the drone if I have to look down at the controller real quick. I have two white strobes. I mount them to the sides where the colored ones go at night. I set this really annoying blink pattern and it helps quite a bit in those situations where I might accidentally lose sight of that drone momentarily. So those are the lights and you really only need one. Just get a white one, mount it to the top of your drone and you've met the requirements to fly at night. Now I wanna look at some of the actual night related questions that you might see on your part 107 practice test. These include questions that I wrote myself and actual FAA questions. These are all from my 315 question test bank, my part 107 practice test and course that you can find at photocourses.link slash 107 test. You can take 20% off of both of those products with the code tube 20. So let's start looking at some of these questions. According to 14 CFR part 107, what is required to operate a small unmanned aircraft in civil twilight or at night? A, use of lighted anti-collision lights, B, use of a transponder, or C, selection of a rural area for conducting the operation. Civil twilight is just a fancy term for the 30 minute period after sunset and the 30 minute period before sunrise, and then night falls in between that. But if we look at the answer choices here, we can quickly eliminate two of them. We're not allowed to use a transponder on our drones and there's no mention of a transponder in the night regulations. Same with the selection of a rural area. There's no mention of only being able to fly in a rural area in that night regulation. So the correct answer is A. When conducting operations during civil twilight or at night, the small unmanned aircraft must be equipped with anti-collision lights that are capable of being visible for at least A, one statute mile from the control station, B, three statute miles from the control station, or C, five statute miles from the control station. I just beat this number to death. The correct answer is B, three statute miles. When does a remote pilot in command operating at night have the discretion to reduce the intensity of the anti-collision lighting? A, never, B, only at the start of a night operation, or C, in the interest of operational safety. I didn't mention this at the top of the video, but if we go back to 14 CFR 107.29, it says that in the interest of operational safety, the pilot in command at their discretion can reduce the intensity of the anti-collision lights. The caveat to that, however, is you can't turn them off. You can only reduce the intensity. A lot of the aftermarket strobes out there don't allow you to do this. Like that firehouse strobe that I suggested doesn't give you different intensity options, but you do need to know this question, this part of the regulation for the test. And one of those safety items might be if that strobe is at full intensity, you might be losing your night vision, which could be dangerous, so you can reduce that intensity. Next question, to keep the small unmanned aircraft in the intended area and within visual line of sight during night operations, the remote pilot in command A should reduce operational ranges, B may rely solely on anti-collision lights, or C is required to designate to visual observers. Nowhere in the regulations does it say that you can use the anti-collision lights as the only means of identifying where your drone is and where it's headed. You have to be able to do that uh, visually by looking at the drone and being able to see which way it's pointed. That's why those red and green lights can really help. You can't use that white anti-collision strobe. So because of that, you need to keep the drone closer to you at night. During night operations, compensate for the night blind spot by A, using bright ground lighting around the remote PIC, B, looking five degrees to 10 degrees off center of the small unmanned aircraft, or C, focusing only on the control station display. Well, even if you don't know anything about the physiology of the human eye, and the night blind spot that we all have in the center of our retina, you can immediately eliminate A and C because 
No one wants to be doing that at night. So the correct answer here is B, look off center. Don't stare directly at the drone because at night we use our peripheral vision, which means that we need to look five to 10 degrees off center to more easily identify that drone. If the remote PIC cannot determine the location of the unmanned aircraft in relation to other aircraft during night operations, when should he or she land the small unmanned aircraft? A, immediately, B, within 10 minutes, or C, at the end of the planned operation? Well, this is a safety question. If another aircraft like an airplane or a helicopter is approaching your operational area at night, they're likely going to be right above you. They're not gonna be flying below you at night. And so the safest thing to do right then would be to land immediately. You don't want to wait 10 minutes to see if that aircraft is gonna crash into you or not. The same thing with answer C. So A is the correct answer here. As landing a small unmanned aircraft at night is particularly challenging, select a landing area a, with sufficient lighting to allow a safe landing. B, that is as far away from crew members as possible. Or C, over water, sand, or other soft surfaces. I think common sense here would tell us that we want to make sure that we can clearly see our landing area when we are landing our drone at night. And so the correct answer here is A, make sure that it is well lit. You're not going to be able to see that drone very well landing at night if it's too far away from you. Sunset is at 7.32 p.m. Can you fly your small unmanned aircraft at 7.45 p.m.? No, it's after sunset. B, yes, with an approved anti-collision beacon until 8.02 p.m. Or C, yes, with an approved anti-collision beacon all night long. That 8.02 number, that is the end of civil twilight, the 30 minutes after sunset. But those are the old rules. You can fly all night long now with that approved anti-collision beacon, so the correct answer is C. You want to fly in the middle of the night without an anti-collision beacon for a specific job. Is it possible to get a waiver for this? A, yes, B, no, or C, only in Class G airspace. Flying at night without that required anti-collision beacon is on the list of things that you can get an operational waiver for. You just have to make sure that when you apply for that waiver, you have a plan to show the FAA that you can do it safely. You will best adapt your night vision if you avoid bright lights at least A, 10 minutes prior, B, 30 minutes prior, or C, two hours prior. The standard number for night physiology for adapting your eyes to night and preserving your night vision is to avoid bright lights at least 30 minutes prior to that night operation. The correct answer here is B. You plan on operating a night flight in an area with high intensity lights. What should the pilot in command do? A, use the first person view to avoid the lights. B, ensure all lights are turned on prior to the flight, or C, attempt to have all lights turned off prior to the flight. If you're in an area with very high intensity lights, like a very large construction site, those are completely going to wreck your night vision and make it really difficult to see that drone. Now you can't fly solely on the first person view, and you obviously don't want all those lights turned all the way up. So the correct answer is to try to get them turned off before your night operation. How should the control station backlighting be set during a night flight? A, as low as possible to preserve night vision. B, as high as possible to be easy to see. Or C, the control station should be turned off. Well, let's eliminate at least one of those. You can't fly without a control station, so that needs to be on. And then it's all about safety, all about preserving your night vision. So you don't want that control display all the way up at night. You can see it perfectly fine with the backlighting turned all the way down, and that's gonna help you preserve your night vision. You're shopping for an aftermarket anti-collision beacon to place on your unmanned aircraft for night operations. Which requirements do you need? A, 
flashing strobe visible for three statute miles, B, solid light visible for three statute miles, or C, flashing strobe visible for five statute miles. We talked about that at the very beginning of the video. You'll find this in 14 CFR 107.29. It needs to be visible for three statute miles and blink at a rate sufficient to avoid a collision. It cannot be a solid light. I hope all of those questions made sense. You'll ace at least the night portion of the part 107 test now. Just be aware of bad information, old, outdated information. If you do want to make sure that you're using the most current, correct information to study for that part 107 test, you can check out my remote pilot test prep course that you'll find at photocourses.link 107. I update it several times a year. I'm always paying attention to that course. And remember, you can save 20% on that course with the code tube20. Happy flying. Subscribe for more great tips like this every week, and I'll see you in the next video.